Cool. How are y'all doing? Great. Thank you, Ari. Excellent. Gonna go and close the door and get a start. Wait, where's where's Eric at? Hmm. Search party for Eric. This is all going on YouTube right now, so this is cool. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'll crack it that way. Um, today's uh, lecture, just uh, location of research, and as we've talked, like most of you, it seems like you know how to find it or locate it. Um, Google Scholar being like probably my favorite thing. I'm going to walk you through how to do it on Google Scholar, PubMed, and actually through the library. I've got like screenshots of every little step that I do, uh, like on this PowerPoint set, which I. I posted like right before class, um, or I don't know, a couple of hour ago, hours ago, something like that. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit and like a couple of other things. I've got like an outline uh, slide coming up here in a second. But just coming up, just a little bit of a reminder. Um, uh, really, I do this at the beginning of every class every day because it helps me center on like what's coming and what I need to get through today. Uh, so a couple of things here, location of research and APA style, we're working on that, hierarchy of research on Wednesday. On Friday, begin literature search for project. So we don't have a formal class that day, I'm just meeting with groups one, two, and three. So come around two, if you're in group uh, two and three, if you're in groups, sorry, plural, two and three. Uh, if you show up at like 210 or after that, that's okay, but group one, totally show up in this room at two. Is everyone good with that? That makes sense? All right, perfect. Um, then next Monday, uh, we're going to do Hierarchy of Research Part 2, going on with that. And I have a case report for you to read. So if anybody's looked on Canvas, I, I don't know, I want to just go over there really fast so that we can talk about a few things. So here's the general Canvas page, right? Like, has everyone gone to this? Okay, cool. So just making sure, like syllabus quiz, hopefully everyone did it. That's our syllabus. That was the MP3 file, just the audio file of uh, like me talking about the syllabus. Down here, group two project. If, um, um, if you don't come to certain things, I am putting all of these lectures on YouTube. So if you click on that group project lecture, there is a link to like a, a YouTube page where it's just the screen recording like this and so on and so forth, right? Um, test one materials, location of research, you have my slide set. I'm gonna put this lecture right under this. Now down here, we've got a couple of quizzes throughout the semester, really just to get us acquainted with reading like case reports, randomized control trials, all of that. Uh, so animal research, we're going to throughout, and I, I'll remind you, you're going to have to read these, and coming into class that day, we'll discuss it, but you'll have a quiz about it right before. Good with that? Good? That makes sense? So uh, next week on Monday is whenever I'm expecting all of you to uh, start reading into that. So reading the case report. So it just says case report. So case report quiz, dissect an academic paper, location of research, do that day. That's probably the biggest thing. Uh, like on the 7th, everything that I'm talking about, your assignment is due that day. It's uh, 25 points overall, uh, pretty important. Um, read animal trial, and I meet with groups 4, 5, 6, and 7 next Friday. So just looking ahead a little bit. Um, so what we're going to be talking about in here today, and I'm, I'm willing to like go on to like, I don't know, Google Scholar and like find things and show you a couple of things with it. There, there might be some things that you don't exactly know um, uh, if, if you haven't played with it a lot. Um, but ways to locate research, there's effectively three ways. Then we're going to talk about APA style citations just a little bit, not too much. Um, then I've got a couple of things of like locating things through Google Scholar, PubMed, and all of that. And then at the very end, I'm going to talk a little bit about the publication process. So a lot of you might not know how involved the publication process actually is. So I just want you to know about that. Um, because in this class, we're going to talk about things that count as citable material and things that don't count as citable material. Really quick, is WebMD citable material? No. No, of course not. Um, and there's various reasons for that. Like experts in the field do write it, but like they don't go through the whole rigmarole of the publication process in order to get something uh, like actually out into uh, 
uh, the universe. Um, uh, so here, ways to locate research three, Google Scholar, PubMed, uh, library, online database. So I would go ahead and just like know those three. That's probably going to be a fill in the blank question on one of my tests. So relatively easy. And as I've talked before, this class isn't exactly like my other classes. The tests aren't quite as meaningful um, as other things. Uh, so the assignment, a couple of points about it. So this is due on the 7th, February 7th. So coming up, right now it's, uh, I don't know, it's January or whatever at the moment. So you're going to locate five peer-reviewed publications. What's up, Ari? This one? I mean, like, this is all on the YouTube. So it's, yeah, I mean, just, so everyone, no more questions. I'm joking. <laughs> it's, uh, geez. Oh. Gosh. My mom actually watches all of these. Like, like her and I don't talk, but like she watches all of these. Like, so I, I was writing one time, and like, like I'm left-handed, right? She didn't know I was left-handed, so I don't know. I hope she hears this. Um, <laughs> uh, that's all a joke to me. Um, so locate five peer-reviewed publications. You have to give me the API citation and a little bit other material about it. Um, so the types of publications will be certain ones that I think we're actually going to uh, do the most. You're going to have to find five, right? So an editorial position stand or expert opinion. Next, an animal or in vitro research. So in vitro, does anybody know what in vitro means? Someone tell me. In the womb? So that's in utero. So like, actually, really good. Like we're using Latin. I like this. I like this. Cool. Huh? Oh, uh, so, well, so, um, so in vitro fertilization, so yes, that, that's certainly a thing. But what in vitro fertilization actually means is, uh, so you, like, you take like a woman's egg, and you actually take a pipette and put like a sperm cell into it. So that, uh, like, that thing that you're doing it in is a Petri dish. So in, in vitro actually means a cell culture or in a Petri dish. Is everyone good with that? Right? So frequently in vitro research would be say, uh, uh, like a lab I was in, we used to do this all the time. We would just have like muscle cells growing inside petri dishes and then we would just pour different things on them. So like put like whey protein on them and see how they grew. Or put like, I don't know, uh, uh, like a myostatin inhibitor and see if that made it to where they could grow more. Or we would pour like, Ah, oh, gosh, what would it be? Like uh, hydrogen peroxide on it to s try to kill some cells. And if there was like an antioxidant thing on there, it would make it to where less cells died or whatever. It's actually really like cool stuff. Now, animal research, what do we think that that means overall? Oh, man, I hit that. That's going to be loud. Whoops. Animal research, what does that mean? Cool, no discussion today. I'll go faster. Sophia. Yeah, rats or mice or chimps or baboons or like uh, like pigs uh, seem to be really good. How do we feel about animal research overall? Not very good? Not very good? No? No? What if I told you that we're 97% the same as mice? <coughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, all of you are rats to me. It's, um, no, like, I'm joking. It's, uh, now, now, like, various things actually are not uh, the same. Uh, but, like, if you look at, say, how a muscle functions, it seems to work pretty well. Their livers are a little bit different. Like, uh, I don't know, like, rats don't have gallbladders, so that's kind of scary. So you can't really do much, like, research uh, with that with rats. But you'll have to find something like that. Randomized control trial, uh, that, hopefully you know what that is. Almost all of the time if you find research and it's a randomized control trial, it will be in the title of that paper. And that's because if it's a randomized control trial, that's like our highest tier of like experimental research that if it is, it's going to get published. Uh, so that, that's kind of a big thing with it. Uh, systematic review, meta-analysis, and I'm going to show you like examples of all of these. And right here, I actually made a mistake before class today. Nothing earlier than 2009. So I what, like typically you don't want to go any earlier than like 10 years ago. So right now it's 20, it would be 2010. But since I already put this up onto our thing, that's what I want. I want you to find these five different types of research, nothing earlier than 2009. 
So 11 years in this class. Okay, we good with that? Now, if it's older than that, it's still valid. Are you raising your hand? Yeah. Yeah, what's up? So, are these like racist topics in relation to the one that we're doing? It can be, yes, yeah. And in fact, like if I was any of you, I, uh, I at first I'd show up to class on time, but like, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, uh, yes, it, it would be good if you got like these types of research like what you're researching for your group, but it doesn't have to be. So like different things, like um, I don't know, the personality group, you might have a difficult time finding an expert opinion about that. So um, just going into that a little bit. So here's really quick examples of these. And you might have to read a little bit in order to know for sure, but an editorial or expert opinion, this is generally what it is. It's an opinion piece written by an expert in the field. It typically doesn't follow uh, the, the primary structure of how papers are put together. So the primary structure of how papers are put together is abstract, introduction, methods, results, discussion. Typically, editorials or position stands don't necessarily look like that. So here, there's a link. You can click on it if you want to. Um, but, I mean, I'm going to click on it for us. So here, I found, uh, I found this. Editorial update on emergent drugs for cancer cachexia. So this, how it looks, going through the paper, there's, there is an abstract to it, background, some, really it's overall almost like a review and seeing where we stand right now in terms of like cancer and cachexia. And these two individuals, I forget their names, um, Kate Murphy and uh, Gordon Lynch, they're experts in cancer and cachexia. And it says editorial in it. Frequently, it will state that in the title as well. Does that make sense? Good. So like after I show you like how to find research, you could find some good search terms for different things. Good? That makes sense? Okay. Moving on to the next thing. So here, animal or in vitro uh, research. So we already knocked that out. So this right here, a lot of times animal or in vitro research, it's gonna have stuff that is like a completely different language in the title. So here, uh, like actually some research from people that I know. Uh, the, so the serine protease dipeptidyl peptidase 4 as a myokine dietary protein and exercise medics as st uh, stimulus for transcription and release. So this was an in vitro uh, uh, study. So just you have to find something like that. It frequently won't say animal or in vitro in it. How you can tell that it is, you have to go all the way down into the methods. And here it says cell culture. Does everybody know how to do like control F? Right? So you might have to do some stuff with that. Good? That makes sense? Fairly reasonable on how to find it. So on, on how to find like an animal or in vitro uh, style paper. So back to here, what? Um, so animal or in vitro, it follows the typical paper section. So intro, methods, results, discussion, uh, so on. Um, using an experimental that isn't humans. So next thing, RCT, randomized control trial. <coughs> the main things with this follows typical paper section. So introduction, methods, results, discussion, all of that. Um, it will typically have RCT in the title, which really for us, I want this to mean that they have a control group and an experimental group. So if we go on to online over here, here's a paper that I found. Um, so right here, a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled um, uh, trial to determine the effectiveness and safety of thermogenic supplement in addition to an energy restricted diet and apparently healthy uh, females. So here it says randomized control trial like right within the title. So your search term should probably incorporate that. Good? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Cool. Oh man, who's that? Uh, next thing Systematic review and meta-analysis. So frequently they're one and the same. So in the title, it will say systematic review and meta-analysis. Um, 
Uh, <clears throat> however, it could just be a meta-analysis if there's just an examination of data on a number of independent studies uh, of the same subject in order to determine overall trends. So really what this ends up looking like, a systematic review is published in one of these peer-reviewed journals and it more or less reads like a book chapter, like in a textbook. So it will have sections it won't follow the typical like introduction methods results discussion um, if it's just a systematic review. Now in a meta-analysis it may follow the like introduction methods results and so on because what meta-analyses are actually doing so you know like most studies like collect data and then they do statistics on them to figure out if anything happened or not. So what a meta-analysis is it is essentially like doing statistics on numerous studies. Does that make sense to everybody? So like if I wanted to do a meta-analysis on like, I don't know, exercise and diabetes, I would ask all of the people I knew who did research in exercise and diabetes, and I would say, hey, give me your results. And then I would do a, a bunch of statistics on all of the statistics that they did already. So it's like math on top of math, right? Now, why would we do that? Because there's kind of like a replication crisis in research right now that like one study can say something, but like it might be wrong. So if you like aggregate together like 20, 30, 40, 50 studies, you start getting a better picture of what's actually going on. That's really the overall benefit of meta-analysis. Does that make sense to everybody? Right. Okay. Cool. So um, I don't think I did this yet. Ooh. Right there. And here, here's just an example of like a meta-analysis uh, I found. Um, so the effect of protein timing on muscle strength and hypertrophy. So th what this study did, they essentially found every study that had something to do with giving people protein and having them lift weights and what happened with their muscle growth or how strong they were. And then they did a bunch of statistics with it. Uh, like, here, let's see if I could find that really quick. Frequently, a meta-analysis will have this type of figure in it. Has anyone ever seen a figure that looks like this before? You have? OK. Um, Lance, what is it? Oh, I'm not really sure on what it is. I'm just seeing it. Oh, but, but you've seen it. Okay. Yeah, 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 cool. So really quick, what this is, it's a forest plot. Almost any good meta-analysis will have a forest plot in this. So if you don't know what a forest plot is, you do now, right? Everyone good with this? So what this is, there might be like kind of like a binary on what happens with like, say this one for example, like favors control versus favors treatment. Right? So what's, what we're looking at here is really the overall effect of all of these studies. So like Anyo, Bird, Kando, Willoughby, all, all of these people right here, where it seems to like stack up, right? So like this study in particular, Willoughby, favors treatment. So given protein like at the end and whatever variable this is looking at. But most of them are kind of around the midsection right there. So around that zero point. So it seems like almost nothing's really having much of an effect, but that one study does, right? That's how you read a forest plot. All good with this? Go with this. So like whenever you're going through your research, if you don't understand something, like bring it to me and I, I can at least attempt to help as much as I uh, possibly can. So there we go with that. Okay. So. Those are like examples of all the different, like the five different things that I want you to find. Um, so what you're going to have to tell me in a Word document, these are the things for each one of the, the five that you find. And don't replicate them from anybody else in the class. Find your own things. So you're going to have to tell me the type of study. So is it like an editorial, an animal trial, RCT, systematic review, or meta-analysis? You have to do all of those, so just tell me what it is. I can probably tell just by looking at the title, but just tell me anyway. Then on the next line, tell me just the title of the paper. Good? So that's the biggest thing uh, at the front of it. 
tell me the year it was published. The year. Frequently, you can actually find the month as well. That would be cool. And then give me the APA citation. Good with that? So all of those things to get full credit, don't just give me five APA citations and expect to get full credit. Cool? Now, all of that will be located within the APA citation. I'm just you know, making you do things arbitrarily, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so here's kind of an example of something. So randomized control trial. Here would be a title of a randomized control trial I found. There was the year, and that's the APA citation. Y'all good with that? Cool. Relatively easy. Relatively easy. OK, so looking at the citation, here's stuff that you need to know for right now. For the citation. Now, there's a lot of like citation generators and stuff that will like help you do this. But on on an exam, I'm going to ask you the specific parts of an APA citation. <coughs> so we need to know this. So it's going to be names of different individuals. So how it always is is their last name, comma, first and almost always these days first and then middle initial. So here, name comma, first initial, period, second initial, period, then comma, then next author. And here's a question. Are the authors, how do they figure them out? Are they alphabetical? Are they? I don't know. Like, walks, like, I mean, that W comes after P in the alphabet, right? Unless you have a new alphabet that I'm not aware of. Sydney, you're getting tired, huh? Sorry. This whole class is going to be boring. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so how these people are actually figured out. What it is most of the time is the order of work that people actually put into this. So the first person typically does the most work. Now, the second person does a little bit less, so on and so forth. Now, one thing that you might not know, the last name, the reason that there's dot, 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 and last name, that is frequently the person who is what's called the PI, or primary investigator, in that lab. I hope you all are writing this down, because I'm going to be asking this. So it's an order of work. However, frequently, the very last author is the person who is the director of the lab that the research was done in. Good? OK. Then after that, period, parenthesis, no, uh, no commas here, date, just the year that was published, comma, period. And then we put in the uh, title of the paper. Do you notice anything about the uh, capitalization or uh, yeah, I guess that's how you'd say it. Capitalization. What's up, Ari? Yes, only the first letter is capitalized. Everything else is lowercase. Now, it could be like different if it's uh, like a, a particular like, I don't know. Um, I don't know, like proper noun or something like that. I, I'm not really sure how to use the English terminology on that, um, for example. Um, for example, no examples. Uh, so there, that's how that goes. And then the journal that it's in. And that journal, it needs to be italicized. Yes, yes. Thank you, Trent. Italicized. And you need to capitalize what the journal typically capitalizes. So we publish it in a journal called Amino Acids. And then after that, it's volume number and then issue number. So something here. This will happen a lot. That volume number is italicized, but the issue number isn't. Good with this? Right? OK. And then it's the pages that it is on. Everyone good here? Now, in a references section, how do we assort different uh, like citations in a references se section? Is it alphabetical that we do it, or the order that we used it? Alphabetical. alphabetical, yes. So know that. Good? All right. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, Eric. 
Yes. First last name, yes. So if, uh, if you cited a bunch of people named Smith after this, it would come later. Or if it was like Adams, it would come before, right? Good. Okay. So that, that's how to do like a citation in the references section in your paper. That's what I'm expecting. Um, now for like how to cite like within the paper in-text citations, I'm going to give you like a couple of examples here. So there's a couple ways how to do it. Um, and here, like, let's, let's just look at these. So if you're citing a particular study, you would say the author's names, et al., what does et al. mean? Does anybody know? Yeah, 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 and others, with others, whatever. Uh, if you don't want to use the Latin there, you can say and colleagues, right? Good with that? That makes sense? So and colleagues is frequently used as well. Then period, comma, date, Reported stuff and things happen to participants who do stuff, right? So like, like whatever happened, whatever happened. Here's another way. Uh, like if there's only one author on it, Smith, year, did the same. Or like whatever you want to write to illustrate your point. Um, Smith and James, words, 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 right there, pretty easy. Um, if there's more than three at all, all of that. Um, now if you're citing more than one, like article, at once. It would look something like this. Smith et al., 2017, then what's that? That's a semicolon, is that right? The right semicolon? Okay, good. Then Zamson and Jack, um, uh, that was actually someone I found, in 2009. Now, something to notice here, if you're citing numerous authors within like one set of parentheses, it's alphabetical. Y'all good with this? Okay, so like here, let's look at some examples really quick. I, uh, I, uh, I'm not sure if you'll have this. Um, uh, here's just a study I found in 2006 that I thought was kind of interesting. Here is the like beginning the introductory part of the paper. So here, the relationship between exercise behavior and mental health has been examined by many researchers. So that person and that person, 1993. So B F uh, G, right, that's how that works, N, S, S. You all good with this? That makes sense? So that would be how to do numerous ones at once. Notice the semicolon between each and a comma before the date. Now, uh, here, that's approximately the same. Now, both of those are at the end of a sentence, so that's one way to look at it. Let's look at this one right here, that Koopmans and Vic, or Vink, I'm sorry. How that looks, you can insert it in the middle of a sentence, and then continue on with the sentence if you're referencing a particular aspect of the sentence. Y'all good with this? This makes sense? Like really, I think the easiest way to like do this is to just read a crap load of papers. That's uh, because me saying all of this to you, like, I mean, I see Sydney right now. I know this is super boring. I know. But this is the last thing I have to do today, so, you know, we have to sit through it. Um, okay, uh, moving on. Okay, I already uh, cited that. Now, how to figure out APA citations. Um, a really cool thing about Google Scholar is it'll basically do it for you. Um, but if you want to look at different places, as some people do, I, I don't know if anybody ever goes to like EasyBib or the Purdue Owl or any of that. Does anybody do that anymore? You do? Okay, okay, cool. So like you can certainly go to those if you want to. Google Scholar, I think, is cooler, like it'll just do a lot of stuff for you, and I'm going to show you that uh, here in a little bit. So how to find things on Google Scholar. So here, let's work through how to uh, like find a particular thing. So here's Google Scholar. Do you all want me to go through like screenshots on this, L like this is within the PowerPoint, or do you want me to like actually find something like live right now? Live? Hell yeah, we'll do it live. Right, that's um okay. So here, at Google Scholar, here it is. So articles, you can go to Case Law if you're into like Dr. Shirley's like law class, which I've never took and I don't want to. Um, so what are we interested in, huh? Oh yeah, no, I mean like Dr. Shirley's awesome. Like he's from Texas, so obviously he's good. Which, um, hmm? how many people have y'all met from Texas? Only professors. Right? Isn't that crazy? No. Huh? My family's from Texas. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. And Ari's the only one who counts. Sorry, Abriel. Okay, so, so here, what are we interested in? Exercise. We should all be interested in exercise. Something else, something with exercise. <coughs> Nobody's interested in anything? Exercise prescription? Exercise prescription? Man. It's uh well like I don't know let's tie it to a disease. How how about that? Diabetes. diabetes. And diabetes. Wait, hold on. Is uh That's funny. <laughs> like that's what I was looking at before. Okay. Cool. I mean like I'm fascinated by di diabetes. Are y'all okay with looking at diabetes? Right? Like we could look at cancer, depression or like whatever ails all of you. So, um so exercise and diabetes. So here, we uh, press go on it. We get a bunch of research, a bunch. So this one right here, 2004, ah, that sucks. That doesn't work for our class. 2016, perfect, yeah. Mike, that totally works for our <coughs> class. Now we can customize a range. So 2009, if the number lock would work, 2009 to uh, 2020. We could do that if we wanted to. So here, 2016, 2011, uh, 2012, so on, so forth, right? Good. Now, if you wanted to find something really recent, so since uh, 2019, that would work as well. Good? Okay. Yes, Mike? Don't you necessarily want to the most recent? Yes. Okay. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that, that's why we have, like, we typically don't want to go any more than 10 years back unless we have to. And, like, like this is kind of interesting. Like, uh, so Albert Einstein, he's published a lot of research. He hasn't been cited that much because it's, like, too old, right? Isn't that crazy to anybody? Okay, I think it's kind of crazy. Um, so here, let's say that we want to look at this first one right here. So resources to guide exercise specialists managing adults with diabetes. So we could click on that and... We essentially have the entire article. Now, if we wanted to cite this, does anybody know how to cite something right from Google Scholar? Okay, so this is going to help you a lot, and this is how I do everything. Do you all see that, that little quotation thing? Right? Like if you hover your cursor over it, it says cite. So it seems like that might be how we cite things. Right? So if you click on that, check this out. Super cool. So it gives us the MLA, APA, Chicago, Harvard, Vancouver. Now, we don't care about all of these because, like, we're American, so we do the American Psychological Association, right? We don't do these other ones, right? Now, the only thing that is almost always wrong with Google Scholar that I want you to pay attention to, you can't just copy and paste these straight. You need to change a thing to them. Here, APA citation. What's wrong? Sports medicine open. We actually need to capitalize those. Good? That's the only thing that's incorrect. So, like, let's work through this, right? So, Turner G, oh, like, okay, and uh, Quig S, so these people don't have middle names for whatever reason. Um, uh, so on, so on. Then the year, 2019, that's pretty cool. Then there's the title to it, Resources to Guide Exercise Specialists uh, Managing Adults with Diabetes. And that's perfect, only the first thing is capitalized, so we're happy with it so far. Now here, sports medicine, open. They even italicized the five. Right? I don't know if y'all can see it there, but they did. Um, I italicized the five, so volume, and then the issue, and then on the pages. The only thing, sports, that's capitalized, that's good. Medicine, that needs to be capitalized, and open needs to be capitalized. That's the only thing that's wrong here. Now, if you don't capitalize those things, I'm going to take points off. Cool? Good? Because, like, you can literally just copy and paste this. Just like that, then let's, I don't know, let's go back to over here. Like it takes that long to cite something. Now, like it takes way longer to read the paper, right? And like that's how all of that works. Good? Good on that? Okay. Now, 
for interest of time, I'm not going to go over um, all of the other ones, uh, like the, the PubMed and the interlibrary loan, just because you can certainly use those, but I, uh, I don't know, Google Scholar just seems to be a little bit faster, right? So going through on here, like if you wanted to go to PubMed, there's a website for it. PubMed, the website looks like this. You would type into this search bar, and you could alter some things with um, uh, that. There, there's a drag down menu, but it doesn't really seem to um, matter that much. We could do the exact same thing, like type exercise and diabetes in there, and then we could sort through numerous things. Um, Sort by most recent, best match, publication date, first author. If you're looking for a particular author, which I doubt most of you would be, but you might for whatever reason, then you could sort by different things like that. Um, and then we can essentially just find papers. Uh, whenever you get to PubMed, uh, like here would be an abstract. Frequently, there's text or like links to the full text in this upper right hand corner so BMC PMC full text free all of that type of stuff so if you go through PubMed that's how you would find it you all good with that that makes sense okay um, gonna go a little bit faster so find all of that uh, our library is actually really good the main thing I don't know in uh, in my view the main thing to use our library for, if you find something on Google Scholar and there isn't a link to the full text, this is actually what you would probably want to do. So do you see right here, find it at uh, UWW, so a central rule for insulin sensitivity, whatever that is. <clears throat> so we would click on that and it would bring us to uh, like our, uh, uh, what is this, like, like the library website. And then you would just have to like sign in, and uh, I'm a staff member, I guess. So, oh hey, cool. There's my name. And you can find like a citation to it here. Uh, apparently, there's no full text available on this particular um, article because it was from 2020. So, like, you might not be able to find things from 2020 because it just now happened to be 2020. That's probably the best thing about our uh, library and if you have to you could where does it say oh yeah uh, use get get it by request view it get it yeah and then here you would click on that library loan thing enter library loan why water go And here's how the interlibrary loan works. Interlibrary loan, IAD. I'm not really sure what the IAD actually stands for. Um, but here, I would. it's all written in there. And you know what? I'm actually going to do this right now. Submit request for interlibrary loan. So that's how that looks. Hopefully, next class, I'll uh, show it to you that like I actually got this. So. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. They're pretty quick over there. I uh, 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 fairly efficient. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. So there. That's how all of that interlibrary loan stuff works. Cool, <coughs> cool, cool. Okay. Some really quick stuff about the publication process. I only have ten minutes, so I'm going to try to go uh, quick. I think there's only three slides or so uh, for us to go through. So the publication process. Here's what I want you to know about it. So starting off, this is from like a researcher's perspective, and this is just a figure I found on the internet. So you do some research, you collect some data, then you write it up in the introduction, methodology, results, discussion, all of that. You do the writing. Then you submit it to a particular academic journal. So like, I don't know, the American Journal of uh, Physical Therapy, for example. That would be a journal that someone would uh, send things to. Then, whenever you submit it, these journals have what are called editors, and they are not nice. They will look at a paper and say, 
oh, this is terrible, we reject it outright, or, okay, it seems all right, I'm going to send it to other experts in the field and have them review it. So that's called the peer review process. So a paper, before it's actually even submitted, or well, like it is submitted to a, uh, um, a journal, it will go to at least two to three experts in whatever field that that paper is in. And they read through line by line and trying to pick apart the paper, everything that's wrong methodologi methodologically with it, anything wrong statistically, anything that could be possibly wrong with it. And then it would either be rejected by the reviewers or sent back for revisions. Meaning, hey, change this, change this, have another control group, do this, that, and the other thing. So, and then at the end of that, like if you get through all of the revisions, then eventually it actually gets published at, after some copy editing and things like that. That part, like we won't really talk about so much. So all these peer review papers, <coughs> I want you to understand that it goes through so much nonsense before it ends up on Google Scholar. Like this, this whole process from like, can take numerous years to do one paper. Does that make sense? So like I've published like 30 of these, right? I was killing myself all the time to do it. And that's why I'm so lazy now, right? Um, uh, here's another figure. Uh, so author submits article to the journal, journal editor screens, rejects, or sends it to reviewers, there's a bit of like an assessment, reject, accept, no, uh, whatever, author revisions, go back and forth there. Uh, kind of follow it through there. But here's, here's a problem with uh, uh, like working at universities. And if anybody knows anything about like ethics boards and all that type of stuff, like I, like I can't just do anything to any of you, right, in terms of research. I have to get it approved by our ethics committee on campus, the Institutional Review Board. So it can actually get denied if I have a research idea before the research even happens. So there's numerous areas where this could actually get denied. So uh, here, even before that, IRB approval can, uh, 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 can mess this whole thing up or like make it to where like people are being safe. So IRB, I want you to know what this stands for, Institutional Review Board. Institutional review board. So essentially what they are, numerous members, either like on the faculty or community members, that look at and determine if a certain type of research is safe or not. So this is more or less the process of like going through the institutional review board. It's actually super busy and uh, like hard to do. So. Develop a research protocol, identify appropriate co-investigators, uh, uh, complete institutional specific applications. I actually have one that I did here, and uh, like I was going to pull it up and show you, but like it would take too long, and we only have a couple more minutes left in class. Um, uh, create informed consent, develop test documents, uh, conduct annual project review, submit it to the institutional review board, and then they uh, like have a review process, and they can approve it, disapprove it, or have a deferred action on it, meaning like kind of kick the can down the road is more or less what that means. So with institutional review boards, if you do a certain level of research, like say if you do like historical research where you're just really looking at documents, you're exempt from institutional re review board approval. If it's expedited, meaning that it's relatively low risk um, or like you're not doing it on any people, there's typically full board meetings whenever there's something more than minimal risk. So with a lot of exercise, if anybody remembers um, uh, health appraisal, one of the risks of exercise is what? Death, right? I mean, sudden car cardiac death happens, so we have to write that stuff in there. So almost anything I've ever done goes to full board meetings because, well, you have to run a lap, right? And people could die doing it, right? I mean, if you have a congenital abnormality, it certainly could happen. Um, uh, next, very last thing. Whenever you're looking at research, here's something I want you to keep in your head. Not all journals are created equally. Some journals are better than others. There's various journals that essentially you give them money and you can publish whatever you want. 
one way how to assess how good a journal is, and I want you to know this impact factor. It's a really crude way of doing it, but it seems to work. So how, we, how I want you to think about academic journals from here on out is what their impact factor is. So what this is, the impact factor is calculated by dividing uh, the number of citations in the, what, what is this, um, uh, journal citation reference review. It's, it's this thing that comes out every year. It's, um, um, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, year by total number of articles published in the two previous years, and an impact factor, so, so right here, an impact factor of one means that on average, the articles published one or two years ago have been cited one time by a particular, uh, like within a particular journal. So a higher number is better. So if more people are citing what's coming out of that journal, it's meaning, it means that it's having more of an impact in the field, right? Has anyone ever heard of the academic journal Nature or Science? So they're kind of the biggest deals and their impact factor is around like 43, 43 or so. Here are some good medical ones. New England Journal of Medicine, has everyone heard of that one? It's kind of a big deal one. Around 15 or 12, something like that, depending on how you count, count it. So that's relatively good, relatively good. Then there's the Lancet, JAMA, Annals of Internal Medicine, a little bit less. So uh, PLOS, PLOS One, that's, that's a good one. Uh, JAMA, uh, British Medical, uh, uh, what is that? It's not British Medical Journal. It doesn't matter what it is. I, I can't remember right now. Um, but that's something to think about. Yes, Sophia. Does it matter that they're cited in other peer-reviewed papers? Yes. Oh, uh, they uh, like, so in that academic journal, like New England Journal of Medicine, like papers that came out of that within the last two years were cited at least 15 times. In other peer-reviewed? Yes, in other peer-reviewed journals. So yes, not just in the New England Journal of Medicine, but like in The Lancet and all that type of stuff. Good question, good question. Yes, Mike. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like Google websites where the more it's clicked, the, the first one on the website is not necessarily going to be the best. It's going to be the most probably reviewed on the website, or is that? Yeah, like that could be like a lot of like just normal Google searches. Like people like pay ads to Google to like get yeah, their so things up higher. The first yeah. There yeah, yeah. Uh, so with this, it's not like that. It's, uh, it's just in terms of like amount of times that's been cited. Well, like one thing that you could do, and I'm going to try to go uh, really fast. So exercise and all of this stuff. All right. Here's something to look at. So kind of getting into how good uh, an article is. So right next to that citation thing, cited by six, cited by four. Um, that one, not cited at all. Uh, like that would be one way how to see how much impact that paper is actually having in the field. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so like that's all I got. Like we went down to the wire. I can't believe we actually did. Sorry. Okay, so uh, hierarchy of research starting next time. Um, meeting with groups on Friday. See you all all soon.